In Honkai Star Rail, there are seven paths. Two DPS, single target, the hunt, AoE, erudition, two support, buff, harmony, debuff, nihility, two durability, heal, abundance, shield, preservation, one bruiser tank, which is the destruction. YouTube Frogs, we're going to dive into why, in my opinion, the two support paths are the most valuable to invest in. Turn-based star mode is much different than action RPG Genshin Impact. Types or elements function way differently, there's no reactions in the game. Fire does not deal amplified damage against ice, freeze is not a combination between water and ice, but rather a perk of ice type star world characters. The reason why I bring this up is because one type is not going to obliterate the meta from start to finish. Which types are valuable really will depend on the enemy's weaknesses on more difficult content and what rotational content comes out. Now this is especially apparent for our DPS paths, the hunt and erudition characters. Their responsibility is dealing damage to either single or groups of enemies. However, if their typing is not ideal for the situation, their value is much lower than other characters whose typing is favored and therefore trigger weakness breaks very efficiently. Obviously, if your DPS characters are powerful enough with either relics and or your wallet for Eidolons and weapon dupes, then you can brute force. But this will not be the case for a vast majority of the player population. So because of this, over time, we're eventually going to need multiple DPS characters of different types depending on the layout of the most difficult content in the game. And obviously, as more DPS characters come out, power creep is imminent in a structured turn-based game like Star Rail, since the primary focus of these characters is how big their numbers are. Now let's talk Harmony and Nihility, the two support paths. In my opinion, these will be crucial to the success of your teams long term. Because these characters focus on boosting your allies or decreasing the utility of enemies, they are less reliant on their typing for general content. Of course, it's still valuable, especially for nihility characters to have type advantage, but it's absolutely not necessary if their main focus is not dealing damage or smashing through weakness bars. Harmony is in an excellent spot, because Harmony focuses primarily on allies. A lot of crucial buffs come from these characters, and their buffs are what makes them exceptionally powerful and extremely versatile for who they can support. Looking at you, Bronya and Tingyun, probably the two most coveted supports in the game in 1.0. Bronya is a 5-star Wind Harmony character. She has attack and a crit damage buff on her ultimate, she has a cleanse and damage percent buff, and an action bar boost, which she cannot use on herself, on her skill, and she also has an attack buff on her technique, which you apply before you start a battle. With four sources of buff utility, I'm counting the debuff cleanse as a buff, she is probably the most coveted long-term character to have and a must invest. Ting Yun, four star lightning harmony. She has a damage percent buff and 50 flat energy regen on her ultimate. Usually characters have about 100 to 150 total energy, so this is about 33 to 50% of their energy bar, which is quite significant has an attack buff and additional lightning damage proc on her skill, and then her technique self-restores 50 energy before the fight. With three sources of buff utility, she is definitely the most valuable 4-star character that we currently have for long-term investment. Less universal value, but still situationally powerful, 4-star Fire Harmony Asta. She has a speed buff on her ultimate, as well as an attack buff on her talent. However, there's an upkeep for this attack buff, which can be situationally difficult to maintain. And while speed is very valuable to have, you don't notice the value unless the fights are longer and drawn out. Unconditional buffs that boost damage have immediate impact on the fight, and the other two characters have more directly impactful benefits they provide to the team. That being said, Asta's skill is currently one of the most powerful weakness break abilities we have, since on single target bosses, it can hit them 5 total times with fire. For our Nihility characters, their value is a mix between sub-DPS and debuffing, making them also pretty valuable to invest in. We currently have three. Sampo is a 4-star Wind Nihility and is an expert in damage over time. While he doesn't have specific debuffs that reduce the capability of enemies, his Wind Shears can add up to an impressive amount of additional damage whenever the enemy hits their turn. His skill is also very similar to Asta's as a multi-hit weakness bar breaker for the Wind type. So, most of his value is gained in longer duration fights, especially those that have Wind Weakness, where the combination of his ultimate for the increased damage over time taken, and also the 5 stack wind shear can do impressive amounts of damage. Then we have Pella, 4 star Ice Nihility. She has a defense reduction on both her technique and ultimate, and then also has a single buff remover on her skill. The combination of being Ice type for access to freezes, being able to reduce defense before the fight with her technique and during the fight with her ultimate, as well as a targetable buff remover on skill, makes her a very valuable general support, additionally against Ice weakness. 
The limitation of this is of course effect resistance of the enemies as well as the likelihood of boss immunity to freeze but overall still great support value. Then we have Welt. 5 star imaginary nihility. Currently our only imaginary character, his rare typing makes him automatically slightly more valuable to have. He has imprisonment or action delay and movement speed reduction on his ultimate and his technique as well as a chance for movement speed reduction on skill. So the combination of Welt's debuffs and weakness bar breaks makes his kit so sadistically satisfying to witness because enemies are crippled on their ability to move. With the right setup, Walt can enable your team to move multiple times before the enemies can recover from their punishment. Oh, yeah, and you can summon black holes. Who doesn't like summoning black holes? So, that's Harmony and Nihility in a nutshell. The other two durability paths, which are Preservation and Abundance, are pretty close in value, I would say, to the support paths. Healing and shielding are, of course, absolutely essential to the survivability of your team, and in the early game are basically necessary to clear the content at a casual pace. Definitely one of the reasons why Natasha is granted for free pretty early on in the game, alongside March 7th, who maintains those single target shields. However, durability paths from these two, at the end of the day, they do not increase the speed at which the enemies die. They are protective measures and therefore reactive to damage taken, rather than offensive measures like Harmony and Nihility, and therefore proactive at striking first. And also, currently, our healers and shielders do not have an additional debuff cleanse on top of their healing. Once that happens, a healer shielder with debuff cleanse will likely have much more universal value for really tough content that consistently debuffs your team. I hope it's a little bit more clear why I highly recommend investing in certain Harmony and Nihility characters. If you come from Genshin Impact, you definitely understand the value of supports and how some of them released at the beginning of the game are still crucial years later. If you reached this point and enjoyed the video or even learned something, I'd appreciate a like and sub if you haven't already. Otherwise, thanks for watching, good luck on your Star Wars journey, and we'll see you next time. Take care.